Hi, this is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. I'm going to show you how to project an image onto moonlit clouds of a night sky by simulating a searchlight like Batman's bat signal. This document is 1280 by 720 pixels with a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. It's always a good idea to protect the original image, so press Ctrl or Command J to make a copy. We need to get closer to an area, so click on the magnifying tool, and then magnify up the area on the lower right. Since the source of our searchlight will come from behind these structures, we need to mask them by first creating a selection of them. There are many ways to make a selection, but the quickest way for this image is by using CS5's Quick Selection tool. To access it, go to the fourth icon from the top, and choose the Quick Selection tool. I'm using a 3 pixel size. The smaller the size, the tighter the selection will be. Click on your mouse or pen as you drag across the area you want selected. To delete areas of the selection, press Alt or Option as you click and drag across. We'll save the selection by pressing Select and Save Selection, and then press OK. We're ready to set our text, so click on the text icon and choose a font. I'm using Nueva Standard Condensed. Click on the tiny box at the top next to the Type tool and that will open up the Select Text Color window. Choose White, then click on the image and type a word or words you want to project onto the clouds. Choose the Move tool or press the letter V to move it into position. If you want to make the type a little larger, go back to the Type tool, highlight the type again, and increase the font size. We're ready to manipulate the type, but before we can do this, we need to rasterize it. Go to Layer, Rasterize, and Type. Press Ctrl or Command T to call up the transform, and press Ctrl or Command while you click on a corner with your mouse or pen. Then, individually drag each corner and place the text into a perspective that somewhat faces the source of your searchlight. We need to soften the edges a bit of our text, so go to Filter, Blur, and then Gaussian Blur. I'm choosing a radius of 2 pixels. Remember, depending on the characteristics of your font and the size you're choosing, you may want to use a different number. Let's apply a filter that will contour the text to better blend into the clouds. Choose Filter, Distort, and Wave. The Wave window will open. For this text, I've chosen 30 generators. The wavelength is between 36 and 402. The amplitude minimum is 2 and the maximum is 3. The type is Sign with repeat edge pixels. We'll hide the searchlight layer and make the base copy active. Click on the Channels tab and notice the image is comprised of red, green, and blue channels. The RGB channel for red, green, and blue encompasses them all. Let's open up each channel to see which one shows the most contrast. This is the blue channel. Here's green and here's red. I think the blue channel has the most contrast, so that's what we'll use. Click on the blue channel again to activate it, and then click on the selection icon. This will make a selection of all the tonal values in the blue channel. Click back on the Layers tab, and then click on the New Layer icon. Press the letter Q to change the selection into a quick mask. Click the eyeball back on the text layer to make it visible. Press B to get your brush tool, and if you need to make the brush smaller, press the left bracket tool. We're ready to make the conical shape of light projected by the searchlight. Start from the base of the image where you want the searchlight to start. Go to the outer edge of the upper right corner of your text. Press Shift and click with your mouse or pen. This automatically paints in a straight line between the starting and ending points. I'll do it one more time to make it a little closer to the text. Repeat the process, but this time make your endpoint the outer edge of the lower left corner of your text. Now just finish painting in the mask outside the cone shape. 
and when you're done press Q to make the quick mask into a selection. We're going to fill our selection with white and since white is our background color press Control or Command as you press Delete. Let's rename this layer Channel Light. At this point the sky has a good base of illumination in the clouds however it still needs to look like the text is projecting. In order to do this we'll use the text to project itself. I just want to give a quick shout out to Corey Barker who discovered this text effect through what he calls a happy accident. I experimented with it and discovered it would be great to use as a floodlight or searchlight. Click on the text tool and using the same font you used earlier type out your text. Move the text layer to the top and then press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate copy. Press Shift and click on the original layer to make both layers active. Click on 3D and choose New Volume from Layers. Click on the 3D Camera tool and choose 3D Zoom. Go to the top and you'll see two tiny boxes. Click on the left box which is the standard field of view. Click on the 3D object icon and choose the rotate tool. The ghostly text extrusion rotates around its axis as you move your cursor. Go back to the 3D object icon and choose object scale. By dragging the Z axis all the way up it extends the effects length. The 3D object and camera tools allow you to manipulate the size, shape, and perspective of our text extrusion so it looks like it's being projected up into the sky from the same area we started with earlier. We'll rename this layer Text Light. We're going to rasterize it, so go to Layer, Rasterize 3D. Go to the Layers panel and click on the Layer Mask icon. This creates a layer mask for our text light so we can safely remove areas of it. Press B for your brush and make sure black is your foreground color and paint over the areas of the light that spilled past our text. Click on the Channels tab and press Control or Command as we click on Alpha 1 which is the selection we saved of the structures in the lower right of our image. Go back to the Layers panel and making sure our layer mask is active, press Alt or Option and Delete to fill the selection with black. Notice our searchlight is now behind our structures. By the way, we got rid of our selection by pressing Ctrl or Command D. So let's quickly review. Here's the layer of our text that we could read over the clouds. Here's the cone-shaped light we created from extruding the text in 3D and here's the light we created from the blue channel at the beginning of the tutorial. With the channel light layer active, click on the layer mask. We'll just clean up the right edge of the light. I want to blend areas of our text into its environment more, so with the lasso tool, draw selections around the areas of your text. If you hold the shift key, it allows you to draw many of them. Go to refine edge, and I'm going to feather them out to about 8 pixels. Go to Filter, Blur, and Gaussian Blur. For this text, I'm going to choose a little under 4 pixels. So here is our original moonlit night sky suddenly becoming a whole lot more dramatic with our searchlight projection. This is Marty from Blue Lightning TV. Thanks for watching.